Meet him, Rebecca. How do you do? Oh. Well, are you going to take me or the dog home first? Well done. Let me see. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon, gentlemen. Right. You'll be given the press releases. Questions, please. Uh, right. Mr. Goodman? Um, this release tells the story, but it doesn't tell the reason why these raids are being held now. We have reason to believe that a large-scale drug ring has been formed in the city. Our task is to prevent their operation from becoming established. If we allow them time to get organized, they'll spread right across the country. We don't intend giving them that time. Next. Uh, Mr. Crawford? Colonel Munro, uh, I believe these new laws are to stop the trafficking in drugs. Now you turn around and tell us that there's a wholesale ring in operation. Surely if this is the case, these, these laws must be ineffective? Mm -hmm. That proves that there's a growing danger. It might get out of hand unless curbed. Yes, but enforcing these laws, Colonel, the majority of people you pick up are the drug users, not the drug pushers. Now, why didn't the police concentrate more on picking up the drug pushers? Surely the supplier is the real criminal. He is, and we do. Unfortunately, the pusher today is usually also a teenager. He mixes among his friends, they trust him. He supplies them with free drugs until they're hooked on the habit. Then he starts charging them. And that's where the trouble really begins. To support a heavy drug habit, those same youngsters invariably resort to a life of crime. And what particular crimes, Colonel? Thefts, robbery, housebreaking, prostitution, or becoming pushers themselves. It's a vicious circle. Uh, Colonel, there has been some controversy about the harmful effects of Dacha. Uh, I know some people, friends of mine, who smoke pot, and uh, they're not hippies or mixed up kids or anything like this. They're professional people, doctors, lawyers, etc. I don't see why they should risk uh, imprisonment uh, doing something that doesn't harm them or anybody else for that matter. Well, obviously, I could say that as they're breaking the law, they must be punished. But that isn't really the answer. People like that must sooner or later answer ethical questions, such as, do they want their children to copy them? And anyway, are they so safe from addiction themselves? Did you know that 78% of mainline heroin users started out on Dhaka? We intend to snap the chain at the first link. Next. Would you care to amplify that, Colonel, about the first link? I think it's quite simple. Keep the kids away from Dhaka, and you lessen the chances of them going on to pills, acid, and the hard stuff. But, Colonel... Uh, yes, Mr. Van Rensburg. It's easy to say, keep the kids away from Dhaka, but how do you plan to do that? By any means possible, Mr. Van Rensburg. Cut the supply at source. Follow up with continual raids on discotheques, cafes, coffee bars, and any other places where the stuff might just be obtained. Arrest anyone involved in any way with the illicit sale of drugs. Hit them, gentlemen, and keep hitting them. So where's the grass, man? Out here. The buzzard find it. He keeps it sheltered in the kloof. Who shows where? for Africa. Look.
the jeep. It's close. Just received a message from Chopper 1. The suspects are traveling on map reference 1654 in a white vehicle. Right. 1654. Yes, where we thought. Right, Captain. Move. Up to the up. You know any of these chaps, Captain? Yes, sir. This one is Clarence Murphy. He's a two-time loser. Armed robbery, both counts. Was that you driving the first truck? Yes, sir. Why? I think, Captain Janssen, you need a little practice. <laughs> Are your men organized for the raid tonight, Captain Janssen? Yes, sir. Uniform, plain clothes, men, cars, motorcycles, vans. Dogs and animals. When's the briefing? Six o'clock, sir. What are your targets? Three discotheques, two nightclubs, five coffee bars. We hit them all at the same time, sir.
As I said, Captain, practice. Yes, sir. Practice. See this? Blicklow's dead. The others are rested. What about the grass? Burnt. Police burnt the whole bloody lot. Oh, what the hell, there's plenty more. Don't worry about Murphy, he won't talk. You better not. But the others, I'm worried about them. Ah, oh, they know nothing. Nothing important. Then what are you worried about, Rowley? I don't like losing, Marco. I don't like losing anything. Which is why I'm extremely happy with the way our present for enterprise is progressing. Come on. Inside. The dark is just a come on, Marco. You have to. You give it away. But you get them hooked. And they're really on the acid and the hard stuff. That's when they really start paying. And this is where we collect the big money. Going out again, Stevie. What do you mean again? Oh, you're out just about every night. Oh, come on, Dad, please. Not another lecture. Well, I should never have bought you that buzz bike. I haven't got any decent clothes. What's wrong with these? This is in, Dad. Now you're finished. Do you mind if I go? Nothing. I'll be home late. Night, darling. Enjoy yourself. Yeah, sure. Bye. Well, this isn't a home to you. It's a ruddy hotel. Leave him, dear. Let him go. How is college today? Ah, uh, you know. They're giving you a hard time in there. Mom's all right, but Dad expects me to stay at home every night. What's the matter with him? Never mind. Yeah. No, I don't need it. Go on, take it. Thanks, Pat. You're fantastic. Bye-bye. Have a good time. Hello, Tony. Want a toast cheese and tomato sandwich, please? Miss Stevie. You in a hurry? No, not particularly. Why? Well, I'm a bit too short to waiters. I needed someone to take a tray up to Marco. Flat 604. Oh, Marco? No, sure, I don't mind. Grazie. Okay, just keep an eye on my gear, all right? Sure. One of toasted cheese and tomato. Make it a special. Who's there? Me, Steve. I've got some grub for you. Hello, Marco. Kid, you're the new waiter. Tell me, just ask me to bring it up for you, Mr. Marco, six oh four. Oh, come on, that's all right. Ah, oh, come on, kid, you earned it. Thanks. You going up the club tonight? Yeah, like where else? All right, I'll see you there.
What do you want? Grass, the good stuff. How much? An arm? Six grand. Good evening, Mr. Shopkeeper. I'm planning a little trip. Two pounds of lysergic acid by the Two hundred and fifty thousand rand, Duchess. Gift wrap. some grass outside in the garden. You know, man. Hot. Weed. Dacha. Hell, man, you've got it. Who says? My friend. He was just in here. You found me. You need something, Frankie boy? You need it bad? Yep. Yep, I need it. Something like uh, this, maybe. You know the rules, Frankie boy. First, great. Mark, listen, Mark, listen. I'll, I'll get it for you tomorrow. I promise I'll. I'll pay you tomorrow. I promise. First the bread, then the trip.
Mas a Deus, Listen, but we must get that buck out. situation, Johnny. The kid's Pat's brother. Pat Jackson, sir. Did you know him before? Mm -hmm. I haven't met the family yet. I was coming here for lunch on Sunday. It's going to be bloody difficult. Anyway, let's get it over and done with. Come on, Steve. Nick, 
Look, you keep very late hours. Steve, better bring him in. Mum and Dad, this is Nick Johnson. Good evening. I'm sorry to meet you under these circumstances, but we've just picked up your son Steve in a raid on a club. He was quite sick. We don't know what rubbish he had inside him, but we're almost sure it was drugs. You don't know that. You're just guessing. It's the usual thing, Pat. When you raid these clubs, kids try to get rid of the drugs they have on them. They even swallow them. That's what we think Steve did. You've no proof and you shouldn't have arrested him. Steve was not arrested. He was taken to a hospital where he was given a stomach pump. It most probably saved his life. Oh, really? What are you, a doctor or something? You don't... Patricia, you keep out of this. Stephen was caught with his hand in the till. You'd still be sticking up for it. She knows me better than you do. Hey, you speak when you're spoken to. Warned you about those discotheques. Now you know what kind of friends you've got. A lot of bloody darker smokers, gangsters. The club we raided has a bad reputation. We know that drugs are sold there. But the people we arrested aren't the people we're after. We're after the drug pushers, not the buyers. And we think Steve can help us there. Oh, for Pete's sake, I don't know anything about them. The guy who got away, don't you know his name? No, I don't know him. And even if I did, do you think I'd tell you? Richard, take your brother to his room. I want to speak to the captain. Well, go on, do as I say. Come on. Please sit down. He's right, you know. Patricia does know him better than I do. Frank, don't blame yourself. Who then? You? Pat? Why does he have to turn out like this? There's no easy answer to that. I'm afraid you'll have to work it out for yourselves. Well, we can't let him run wild. If we do that, there's no telling what might happen to him. Most of the kids we meet are basically decent. But they get in with the wrong crowd. They try to imitate them. I think your son is mixing with them. But who are these people? If we knew... I don't know. That's what we're trying to find out. If you could help us there, it would solve both our problems. Maybe your son would talk to you. Or to his sister. Not to us. We're the last people he'd speak to. And Patricia, she's on his side. She'll always cover up for him. Hello, Doctor. Hello, Pat. Hi, Stevie. He's going to be fine. Good. Do you mind if I have a little talk to you? Why, sure. There are a couple of things I'd like to sort out in my own mind. Let's go and sit on the bench, then. All right. Uh, Stevie confides in me. And he tells me that he's been smoking Dacha. And he also claims his friends tell him that it's harmless, that it's non-addictive. And I can't answer him, I can't tell him whether that's true or not. He also claims that drugs help him in his studies. Could that be true? No, no. Don't you know the famous story of the chap who was taking an exam and he'd, uh, he'd, he'd, he was on amphetamine or one of those drugs? He went into the exam came on, said he'd done brilliantly. Do you know what he'd done? He'd written his name over and over and over, hundreds of times on the paper. He hadn't answered a single question. Oh, no. But that couldn't happen to Stevie. He's only on grass. Look, Pat, what is it that you want me to tell you about drugs? Do you want me to tell you that they're utterly harmless? Is that what you want? I suppose I'd like you to tell me that Stevie won't get hooked and that he won't mainline. I can't guarantee that. We know for certain that a proportion of these kids do escalate to mainliners. What would convince Stevie? Nick and I are taking him to the hospital to see a couple of people. The addicts, will that help? You're in for a surprise, my girl. Why? What is surprising about people in bed? Look, shall I begin to tell you what the withdrawal symptoms are like? There's a sort of craziness, a helplessness. He'll do anything. Base himself, beg, starve. He needs the drug as a baby needs its mother, as you need the air. He's like a fish floundering on the wet sand, desperate to get back to water. He's got only one thought, how to get his neck shot. But drugs are expensive. What does he do?
Good night, Johnny. Or rather, good morning. Car 30, come in, please. Control to car 30. Car 30, come you in. You must be joking. Maybe he wants to say good night, too. 30 to control, Janssen. Proceed at once to the corner from Villa from Bosch Street. There's a report of a break into a supermarket. Over. Let's go, Johnny. We'll get driving out of cars at 60 miles an hour. What do you expect? That shoulder going to be all right? Papa dies, no trouble. Well, it better be all right. I don't want any foul-ups on this job, Mark. Huh? You worry too much, Rolly. And I suppose I've nothing to worry about, eh? The heat's on, my friend. And if you'd been caught last night... But I wasn't, so relax. The job's going to go off okay, Rolly. Anyway, you didn't have to lose any sleep over it. You're not coming on the job. Sir? 
So I was just supposing you. Don't give me any of that. I run this outfit, and I finance it. This is the last place you'll find amphetamines in the whole of South Africa. Do you think it only cost a couple of rand for information like that and just a couple of cents to set up a scene like this? Okay. Without me, you and the rest of you be on the bones of your asses or inside looking at walls all day. Okay. Brains! That's what it takes, brains. And you and the rest of your rubbish haven't enough to fill an egg cup. So when I want muscle, I buy it. Just like I buy anything else. So don't give me any of this nonsense about coming on jobs, Marco. That's what I pay you for. Remember, I run this outfit. And you take your orders from me. Okay, Ronnie. See the paper? No, not yet. I've been busy. What is it, something bad? They're Frankie Millicate, one of your mainline pigeons. He's in the general hospital under police observation. You said you had trouble with him. Yeah. Last night in the club. Needed a fix. Didn't have any bread. Just how badly did he need a fix? Oh, pretty bad. He was on the way out. You know, he was nervous and sweating. You know, they are. So right now, he's in a very bad way, Marco. You know what it's like when they go up cold turkey. They'll do anything for a fix, and I mean anything. Like talking to the police, for instance. About you and me. What do you want me to do, Ronnie? Get rid of him, Marco. Get rid of him. You're going to see the drug ward, Steve. Most of the patients are youngsters. And just about all of them started on Dacha. Like you. So I've had a few drags on grass. What does that make me? A criminal or something? What about the time when you can't get high enough on grass? And you start on pills, then acid, then the hard stuff. You say you know nothing about this. Come, I'll show you. Your so-called friend is responsible for this. Would you give us a few moments, please? Get it too. 
money on. what that man was doing at the hospital. He killed Frankie Miller. Killed him? Ha! Huh. Says here he injected him with pure morphine. An injection of undiluted morphine is as lethal as putting a gun to his head. Come on. Stevie, these people stop at nothing. If you know anything about them at all, and you don't tell the police, you're as much to blame for this man's death as they are. Okay, if you feel that way, then why are we going out to this place this afternoon anyway? He's your boyfriend. Why drag me in? Hello, Pat. Hello, Nick. You're late. Careful! Sorry, I didn't mean to scare you, but Panda's a one-man dog. He's trained not to be friendly. You stick your hand in there, you'll see what I mean. Do you like dogs, Steve? Why not? They're better than people. Would you like a dog of your own? I suppose so. What's with all the third degree? Mr. Law? Stephen! It's okay. Let's go.
Well, how did you enjoy it, Miss Jackson? I thought it was most enjoyable. Very impressive. And you, young man? The dogs are very good. Yeah, yeah. You. like him, Steve? Ricky, I'd like to introduce you to Steve Jackson. Come on, shake hands. Where are your manners? I thought you said they weren't trained to be friendly. Ricky isn't a police dog. He's a reject. A reject? You're kidding. Ricky is Panda's brother, but he didn't take kindly to training. When he gets it into his head to have things his own way, he's an immovable object. He wasn't much use as a police dog. Well, they certainly seem to like each other. Do you think you can find time to look after him, Steve? Look after him? What do you mean? Just that. I've discussed it with your parents. He's yours. Take us way to the airport, please. Um Strong room alone. We'll see you there. Remember that. Alone. Yes, Mr. Benson? Come and open number one gate for me, please. All right, Stephen, you can go now. Don't want me to help no, you, Mr. Benson. No, I can manage on my own. It's all okay, I can. Please, don't... Stephen. Your instructions were to come along, Benson. Who's this guy? He's from my office. Ah! Ah! Where's the 
warehouse key? I don't know. I don't know. Ah! Don't leave me anymore. I've got the key. Jelly for care of chemicals.
Come on, hurry up. Volnick, sir. Two counts of dealing in drugs, one armed robbery. He's been out for the last few years. Probably the one in the club. Definitely the phony doctor. This address any good? No, sir. I checked. He left it some time ago. But the file lists the Chelsea Coffee Bar as one of his known hangouts. But where are you going to, Marco? Can't you even tell me that? None of yours business. Now, build up. You give me a pint. But what about me? You can't just leave me here like this. Me, 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 me. Come on, I can and I will. And if you talk about me to anyone, I'll cut your throat. And you know I will. Here, here. Good afternoon. Three cheers for the men at work. Right. Hey, how would the police radio go in your well, living room? Well, it wouldn't be bad. Oh, be quiet. It'd go with me police helmet. Wouldn't right. have the metal piece. Well, why don't you get in there and take it? Go on, I dare you. You're on. Okay. I'll take care of our mate here. Hey, Tom! Where's Marco? Marco? Who's the Marco? Try again. You want this place closed in one hour? Where's Marco? Who's that to Marco? He's got a flat upstairs. A general, uh, he was in here about one hour ago. He was looking for a skinny Jackson. Jackson? Better get across there, Captain. Yes, sir. What room number? Six or four. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Hey, boy. Come in, broadcast. Come in, broadcast. Your wife went through the gate. Come in, broadcast. Go on, let's have a drink, eh? You're on. <laughs> I have a warrant for the arrest of Marco Polnick on a charge of murder. How nice for you. We're going to find him, with or without your help. Do we get it? Why don't you go and see a taxidermist? Take this place apart. Stay, Ricky. Stay, boy. Good dog. Hey, Marco, how's it? What are you doing here? A dog. Does he bite? Ah, uh, he won't hurt you. Only if he hurt me. Yeah. I haven't seen you around for a while, Stevie. Mind you, I've been pretty busy myself. Yeah, well, my dad got pretty uptight since that night. You know. Yeah. I saw you at the General, Stevie. Hey, you didn't really kill Frankie, did you, Marco? I mean, it must have been an accident. Yes, you're kid. Here, uh, listen, I want to talk to you. Not here, there's too many people around. Let's, uh, prove it up the club, eh? Talk? About what? I mean, if you're worried about Frankie and all that. Oh, no, no, like you said, it was an accident. Now, this is something else. I mean, really. And if I cut out now, Marco, my dad's going to kill me, honestly. He don't. I will. <laughs> that dog. Really go for me if I grab you? Yeah, sure. Uh -huh. Hey, Marco.
mean that doctor fellow? Which way did he go? Yes, down there, towards D.F. Malai. Where the hell's my mic? I'll have to go after them. But you can't... Well, I can't argue with you now. Mrs. Jackson, will you do me a favor? Certainly. Please ring the flying squad and tell Colonel Munro. Munro. Fine. I think we might have something here, Colonel. Hey, that's mine. You leave that alone. You have no right to fool around with my things. Interesting, sir. To an anthropologist, Peters. I see you're a photographic model, Miss White. So? That's a very neat appendix, Scar. Very neat. You bloody peeping Tom. And their usual holiday snaps at her own at various places. Durban, Clifton. Give them to me. You have no right to snoop around in my ruddy things. The lady does protest too much, methinks, and I wonder why. Yeah, I think this could be the reason, sir. That man with them, Roly Black, he's a bad one. We've had him in twice on receiving charges. Never been able to make them stick. And we think he's mixed up in drugs. Me, Roly, Marco, Skierport. Where the hell's Skierport? He saw me at the hospital, so I grabbed him. You brought him here? You got rocks in your head? That brat doesn't look much, but if we run into trouble, we can use him as a hostage. Come on, get in the house. Get in. Will you wait here, Pat? I'm going across the hill to the house. Radio. Control, I want an all-car call for car 30. All cars to be on the alert for car 30, last seen in the Roosevelt Park area. Sit. No luck control. None at all. No, sir. All right. We'll keep trying. Right, sir. Hey, Lovescockney, we can't get anything on car 30. Our only hope now is to get as many cars as possible into the Skirput vicinity as quickly as possible. I'll see you outside in three minutes. D, are you all right? Did they hurt you? All right. All right. All right. What are you doing here? Well, we managed to follow you, but they caught us right outside. Is there a way out of this place? Well, there's this room and there's a room here next door, but you can't get out of that either. So what's worrying you, Pete? That's the police captain we got there. We left the whole radio as they feed on us, sir. How do they know where to come? A radio, the radio. There's a squad car out there. Tell them, Marco. When I picked up the girl, uh, <laughs> she uh, told me the radio was busted. Oh, please. Of course she'd tell you that. No. No, it's quite true. He couldn't have got a message out. Okay. So now what? Now we sit tight. I don't know where we are. If we move, they catch us. So we don't move. But sooner or later, we can't stay here forever. No. But our three little friends can stay here forever. Can't they? 
This was not that. Hold on. Right. Right, another report from car 17. Negative. What do you want? The dog wants to come out. What for? Oh, don't be silly. You know what for. Let him do it inside. He won't. He's been trained not to. All right, but the boy must bring him out. You stand with your back to the door and put up your hands. If you're not there when I open the door, I'll let the kid have it. Okay, I'm ready. Close the door. Captain, put up your hands. I'd also like Ask to him. go. I'd like to go to the bathroom, please. Captain, you keep your hands up. You come out and close the door behind you. Come on, get a move on. Hey. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> Where's the car exactly? I have to get off. I'm on the road. You see anybody else? Let's go.
Benny. Hello, Benny. Come in. Over. Yes. That cop has escaped. Just block up the main road. Over. Will do. Watch out, he's got a gun. Down.
mad bastard. I thought you said you could drive. Ha <laughs> 